ഹായ് വ്യൂവേഴ്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു ഷേക്കേഴ്സ് ബയോ ഫാക്ടറി ഫർ നീറ്റ് സെക്ഷുവൽ റീപ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഇൻ ഫ്ലവറിംഗ് പ്ലാന്റ്സ് വിത്ത് ഫ്രൂട്ട് അപ്പോമിക്സിസ് ആൻഡ് പോളി എംബ്രിയോണി ഇഫ് യു ലൈക്ക് ദിസ് വീഡിയോ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബ് മൈ ചാനൽ ആൻഡ് ക്ലിക്ക് ഓൺ ബെൽ ഐക്കോൺ ടു ഗെറ്റ് നോട്ടിഫിക്കേഷൻസ് ലൈക്ക് ഫോളോ ആൻഡ് ഷെയർ മൈ വീഡിയോസ് to your students and friends to get more information in biology related to NEET and other national state level competitive exams. In this video, I am going to explain the characters of fruit, apomixis and polyembryony during sexual reproduction in plants. Fruit, it is generally considered as fertilized and ripened ovary during sexual reproduction a fruit formation it depends upon the stimulus of pollination but seed formation it completely depends on stimulus of double fertilization during sexual reproduction after completion of fertilization the ovary it will becomes into fruit by the stimulus of pollination in the structure of a fruit generally two parts are present in this the first part is pericarp or fruit wall and the second part is seed the pericarp it is a protective layer or structure present around the fruit after ripening the ovary wall it will becomes into pericarp and this pericarp generally it may be thick and fleshy or thick and hard or thin and soft in nature this pericarp it is differentiated into three layers in most of the plants the outermost layer in pericarp is called epicarp or exocarp it is the outermost layer in fruit wall it is called rind the second layer in pericarp it is mesocarp this mesocarp generally present in between exocarp and endocarp the third and innermost layer is endocarp types of fruits based on the development of origin generally the first type is true fruits when after fertilization the development of fruit it takes place from ovary such type of fruits are called true fruits these true fruits having seeds these seeds are developed from ovules after fertilization example for this true fruits most of the fruits like watermelon mango coconut and etc all these are example for true fruits these true fruits are developed from fertilized ovary the second type is false fruits or pseudocarp in some of the plants the fruit it is developed from other than ovary and some of the floral pods like thalamus inflorescence calyx now these uh, other parts of the ovary these are participated in the development of fruit such fruits are called false fruits in this fruits the flesh are stored food materials these are derived from not only from ovary but these are developed from the adjacent tissues of ovary these are present exterior to carpels the fruits derived from the ovary and other axillary floral pods in a flower so that these false fruits are pseudocarp it is also called axillary fruits or pseudo fruits some of the example for this false fruits the fruit it is formed from other parts of the flower especially other than ovary like receptacle it is seen in strawberry in strawberry 
technically the strawberry fruit it is aggregate accessory fruit that means the fleshy part it is derived not from plants ovary but from receptacle that holds the ovary the each part seed it is called acheny these are present outside the fruit actually it is equal to ovary with its seed the best example for false fruit it is apple in apple after fertilization the fertilized ovary present at center with seeds but the tissue or fleshy part which is present around the fertilized ovary it can store food material it is developed from thalamus now it is edible in nature one more example for false fruit it is pear fruit in this pear fruit also the fruit is developed from other than ovary now it is also example for false fruit especially in pure the white flesh it is sweet and crisp in nature the best example for false fruit that is cashew nut anacardium accidentalis in cashew tree an accessory fruit or false fruit sometimes it is called pseudocarp or false fruit this fruit it is derived from different parts in flower especially the kidney shaped or boxing grove shaped drupe fruit it is considered as real fruit it is developed from the terminal portion of cashew apple this fruit especially after fertilization the pedicel of the flower due to storage of food material it becomes into fruit now it is called cashew apple it is example for false fruit but the real fruit it is a nut fruit it is developed from the tip of the flower depending upon fertilization the fruits are different types in this the first type is real fruits real fruits are developed from fertilized ovary example most of the vegetables fruits are example for true fruits because these are developed from fertilized ovary and second type is parthenocarpic fruits these parthenocarpic fruits also developed from ovary but these are developed without fertilization the term parthenocarpy in this parthenos means virgin carpus mean fruit this term it is given by one of the scientist nol in the year of 1902 the fruits produced due to parthenocarpy generally due to absence of fertilization there is no seeds in such fruits so that all parthenocarpic fruits are generally seedless fruits technically fruits having seeds especially in banana at center some black colored dots we can observe such as this that represents seeds but it is pseudo seeds in this fruit an asexual embryo is present now the entire structure is called parthenocarpic fruit some of the examples and parthenocarpy is basically three types depending upon its development the first type is genetic parthenocarpy second type is environmental parthenocarpy and the third type is chemically induced parthenocarpy or artificial parthenocarpy in the first type there is a genetic parthenocarpy especially Uh, during hybridization experiments the parthenocarpy production it is arise uh, due to alteration in the structure of gene by selecting some of the plants which produce fruits by altering its genome due to introducing mutation or hybridization now the plant itself it can produce parthenocarpic fruits 
this parthenocarpic fruit development it is completely under control of alterna alteration of genes it is called genetic parthenocarpy the plants whose genome is altered by mutation or hybridization such plants naturally it can produce parthenocarpic fruits some of the example for genetic parthenocarpy it is novel orange banana pineapple varieties of apple grapes and pear fruits these are example for genetic parthenocarpy the second type is environmental parthenocarpy that means some of the environmental factors like low temperature frost and fog have been known to found to introduce parthenocarpy in some plants like pear olive capsicum and tomato such type of parthenocarpy production is called environmental parthenocarpy the third type is chemically induced parthenocarpy in this method by spraying or pasting some of the hormones with a low concentration like auxins and gibberellins it can introduce parthenocarpy and the plant can produce parthenocarpic fruits it is called chemically induced parthenocarpy in this method some of the plant hormones like gibberellins auxins cytokinins such type of plant hormones they helps to introduce parthenocarpy in plants by spraying this plant hormone on flower that can stimulate the production of parthenocarpic fruits so now such type of method is called artificial parthenocarpy example for this artificial parthenocarpy is seedless tomato seedless grape white is cucumber strawberry blackberry fig citrus etc all these are generally can develop with the help of artificial parthenocarpy by using various plant hormones the importance of parthenocarpic fruits the parthenocarpic fruits are commercially useful for various purpose in this generally when we eat the fruit at this time we feel some irritation due to having of more number of seeds when parthenocarpic fruits are taken as a food in our diet that can avoid these irritating seeds these fruits are developed and can produce with more number even inside the greenhouses at this time for the production of fruits no need to depends on pollinators why because these fruits are developed without pollination and fertilization the third importance is in this method the quicker fruit processing can be takes place at the same time these parthenocarpic fruits due to absence of seeds these can widely useful in the preparation of fruit juices jams and jellies the next topic is apomixis apomixis is the most important topic in sexual reproduction why because apomixis it is considered as a type of asexual reproduction in plants the term apomixis first time it is given by one of the scientist winkler in the year of 1908 in apomixis the production of seeds can be takes place without fertilization in apomixis method apomixis it is a abnormal sexuality or truly it is a type of asexual reproduction because in flowering plants or the plants which perform sexual reproduction in this the normal sexual reproduction it is replaced with asexual reproduction the entire process can take place without fertilization the reproduction occur 
with the help of some of the specialized sporophytic or gametophytic tissue without fertilization. Now that phenomenon is called apomixis. This apomixis phenomenon it is generally observed in some of the plants like Osteraceae members and grasses. Why? Because this apomixis is commonly mimic to sexual reproduction that means the sexual reproduction can be replaced by asexual reproduction in this apomixis apomixis generally it is a type of asexual reproduction it occur without involvement of meiosis division along with fertilization apomixis is generally it is controlled reproductive process in this Embryos, seeds are developed from ovary and ovule without female gamete undergoes meiosis division and without fertilization in egg cell. That means embryos and seeds are developed from ovary and ovules without fertilization. Basically there are two types of apomixis. In this the first type is vegetative propagation. And second type is a gamospermy. Already we know vegetative reproduction means the production of new plants takes place with the help of various vegetative parts like root, stem, and leaf. And the newly produced offsprings, these are genetically identical to parents. Only one parental plant can participate. In the production of more number of plants. The offsprings which are produced in vegetative propagation these are clones and these are exact copies of their original parent due to absence of mixing of DNA. The second very most important method is a gamospermy. In this method the production of new plant takes place directly without meiosis division and fertilization these are different types in this the first type is apospore the second type is adventitious embryony the third method is diplospore the fourth method is haploid parthenogenesis and the last method is apogamy these are the five types of a gamospermy methods in these five methods the first two methods apospory adventitious embryony in this method the development of embryo sac it takes place from new cellless or integument cells in the structure of ovule but in diplospory and haploid parthenogenesis the embryo sac is developed from megaspore mother cell without meiosis or with meiosis division but in apogamy the haploid cells are participated in the development of embryo let us discuss the first method it is apospory in apospory the development of embryo sac it directly takes place from either new cellular cells or integument cells that means it is the megaspore mother cell it undergoes meiosis division to form haploid megaspores but the embryo sac it is developed from either new cellular cells or integuments now the entire embryo sac it is deployed in nature in this embryo sac the egg cell is deployed in nature it can becomes into deployed embryo directly without fertilization it is the method called apospory in this apospory the embryo is developed without fertilization but it is deployed in nature it is the special character of apospory now the second method is adventitious embryony in this adventitious embryony so generally the development of embryo it directly takes place from new cells or integuments without meiosis division and fertilization because it is the megaspore mother cell can produce haploid megaspores 
from functional megaspore it produce embryo sac but the additional embryo it is developed from either new cells or integument cells after fertilization along with the true embryo additional embryo also present it is deployed in nature that is these are the main important characters of adventitious embryo now the third method is diplospory in diplospory now the development of embryo sac it is takes place from megaspore mother cell but without meiosis division that means the megaspore mother cell it directly produce megaspore it is deployed in nature because of absence of meiosis division this diploid megaspore it can produce a diploid embryo sac and each cell in this embryo sac it is deployed in nature along with egg cell this diploid egg cell it directly becomes into diploid embryo without fertilization these are the characters of diplospore coming to fourth method it is a haploid parthenogenesis it is very most important thing general development of embryo sac takes place that means megaspore mother cell it undergoes meiosis division and form haploid embryo sac in this haploid embryo sac the haploid egg cell it will develops into embryo without fertilization when haploid egg cell it becomes into embryo now the ploidy of embryo also haploid now the process is called haploid parthenogenesis the last method is apogamy this apogamy it is generally observed in few fern plants in this method the development of embryo takes place without fertilization especially the development of uh, some of the sperms of sporophyte from the gametophyte without fertilization the gametophytic organs or cells they can produce embryo like structures without fertilization now it can becomes into a new plant such plants are always haploid in nature basically this apomixis is two types in this one is recurrent type and second one is non recurrent type in recurrent apomixis both egg cell and embryo these are deployed in nature and the embryo sac it is developed from megaspore mother cell directly without meiosis division it is called recurrent apomixis but in non recurrent apomixis the egg cell and embryo both are haploid in nature because these are directly developed from egg cell it is haploid in nature it is developed without fertilization these are the methods of recurrent and non recurrent apomixis that means in recurrent method both egg cell and embryo are deployed in nature but in non recurrent type both egg cell and embryo are haploid in nature but both are developed without fertilization coming to some of the factors which are responsible for apomixis physiological factors and hormones these are the main factors they can directly cause apomixis in plants apomixis produce seeds progeny these are exact replicas of mother parent generally some of the advantages of apomixis the major advantage of apomixis is over sexual reproduction this method it is possible to select the individuals with desirable gene combination and also propagate them as a clone without fertilization the all characters will be transferred into progeny now it is considered as clones this apomixis it play an important role in hybrid seed production because the method of producing hybrid seeds by cultivation is most expensive process for farmers this apomixis due to absence of fertilization uh, 
it can prevent the loss of specific characters or desired characters in progeny now it can be developed as a hybrid apomixis would allow farmers to save that apomixis seeds for next generation for the cultivation of crop plants because there is no segregation due to absence of fertilization in such plants the major advantage is when the hybrid seeds are made with apomixis in this apomictic seeds due to absence of fertilization the desired characters never segregate in progeny that means all desired characters will be transferred into progeny so that same progeny seeds can be stored by the farmers for the cultivation of next season that reduce expenses apomictic seeds production in hybrid plant it allow commercial use of hybrid seeds without conducting this hybridization again and again in agriculture field coming to next topic it is polyembryony the polyembryony it is a condition in this appearance of two or more than two number of embryos in a seed it is called polyembryony the polyembryony phenomenon it is first time discovered by leven hook in the year of 1719 he also observed the development of two plantlets from a single citrus seed the polyembryony it is a regular process in some of the vertebrates like nine banded armadillo armadillos are most well studied vertebrates frequently they undergo polyembryony especially a six species of armadillo in the genus dasypus that are always perform polyembryonic phenomenon generally in this vertebrates during sexual reproduction after completion of fertilization one embryo is formed now this embryo it can be divided into more than one embryo now it give birth to nearly four identical egg ones such type of vertebrates can perform polyembryony regularly this polyembryony it is a regular process in most of the species belongs to vertebrates in vertebrates even in plants also now let us we discuss which type of plants perform polyembryony because the polyembryony is quite common among conifers like gymnosperms and in many species of both dicotyledons and monocotyledons this polyembryony it is basically two types in this the first type is true polyembryony again it is divided into two subgroups one is cleavage polyembryony and second one is adventitive polyembryony the second type of polyembryony is false polyembryony in true polyembryony the production of embryos within or by projecting into a single embryo sac it is termed as true polyembryony in true polyembryony the additional embryos along with main embryo or true embryo these additional embryos are developed from either cleavage of fertilized egg cell it is nothing but zygote or the additional embryos may be developed from antipodals or synergid cells of embryo sac in this the first type is cleavage polyembryony in this the additional embryos are arise due to cleavage of egg cell at initial stage or sometimes the additional embryos it may be developed from synergids or antipodals or endosperm now it is called cleavage polyembryony it is seen in some of the conifers the second type is adventitive polyembryony in this method the additional embryos these additional embryos are 
developed from the tissue lying outside of the embryo sac especially new cells or integuments it is seen in citrus seeds in this adventitive polyembryony it is also called new cellular polyembryony because the additional embryos are developed from either new cellular tissue or integuments directly the second type is false polyembryony in this false polyembryony it is involved by the fusion of two or more nuclei or development of two or more embryo sacs within a same ovule that means the, in this polyembryony more than one embryo sac is developed within one single ovule now it may develop more than one embryo it is called false polyembryony there are some importance with this polyembryony in plants in this polyembryony has ecological significance such type of polyembryony it increases the probability of survival under varied conditions the new cellular polyembryony already we discussed this new cellular polyembryony is the only practical approach to develop virus free plant or clones in citrus species naturally with this method the disease free plants can be obtained through new cellular embryo culture this polyembryony it gives the progeny these are uniform genetically this polyembryony it helps in the propagation of a fruit trees like citrus and mango especially in citrus due to polyembryony in a single seed the single seed having more than one embryo now each embryo it can give give rise to a plantlet now we can observe two plantlets or more than two plantlets from a single seed that is developed due to new cells or integument apomixis coming to in mango in mango also more than one embryo can be seen that is due to multiple embryo production so that more than one shoot actually several shoot depends upon the number of embryo it is seen in mango due to polyembryony thank you for watching if you like this video subscribe my channel and like my videos share my videos to your students and friends